functional vet with a throttle repair to the HM126 sawmill. This piece right here has a hole in it to drive the screw it holds the throttle cable. This right here is a cinch down. The cable that they sell is armored with a, a plastic sleeve, but due to this COVID foolishness, I'm unable to uh, get one of those cables at this time. So I went back with a lawnmower cable. This clip right there, if you can see that, that is supposed to be clipped down in here on the black plastic which holds this cable so that when you pull on the throttle this thing doesn't move. The, the sleeve doesn't move but the cable does. Over here on this side oops, tripping. The cable which I'll show you in just a minute is old school with the lead bead that fits in here. There's a slot doubt you'll be able to see it. It's right there. The cable feeds in and then swings around this way. And this is what you use to tension. Oh, it's loosened up. This is what you use to tension this cable so that when you squeeze on it, it pulls the cable instead of um, just the, the sleeve moving. This, um, this little brass sleeve right here, I'm looking for the box. This is from O'Reilly uh, Auto. And it's a 03336 and it's assorted cable stop Accept, uh, assortment, which is what you saw, it says used on cable controls, push pull cables, and throttle for power. Now, gives the uh, number of sizes that it has. I just found the closest one that would fit. When you put the screw in, this top screw right here. When you put that one in, you need to really, really torque it down. The alternative to that is to bring the wire out, bend it, and, and tighten this down. That way it can't pull out, but it could always slide forward. You don't want that to happen either. So this was a quick repair while Canada is basically shut down over the COVID stuff. And this is how I fixed my cable. Let me show you the cable I pulled off of it. I cut this end off. This is the end that has the screw that you saw that I said you adjust it for tension. This is the back side of it. And that cap that was floating freely that you saw would fit down on top of this. It doesn't fit on the other one. <laughs> this is the cap that I cut off which slides onto the adjustment part. I didn't check to see what the size of this new cable is, but I had to drill out the, uh, I'm going to call it a furl, though I'm, they call it a cable attachment assembly. I had to drill it out just a little bit for this cable to go through. I used a, uh, looks like a 332nd to drill it out. And um, this worked okay. I just finished calibrating my saw. I want to show you how I did that. As you can see, we have these center support frames in here. These center support frames, I believe, are about 37, 38 inches. I'm not sure. Now, if you remember from me talking about my saw, I told you that I put this treated 1x4 in there and occasionally have to put shims in there in order for this to run level. When you calibrate your saw, man I love this saw, the 
This thing is worth its weight in stomach acid, let me tell you. What I do is I put my tri square, it's a six inch, right here like this. And I crank it up until I reach the top of the blade. If you notice, I'm kind of rocking against it. See, I'm rocking against the thing. And when I reach the top, set down. I lower it just a fraction of an inch. <coughs> so I'll raise it just a slight bit more. I check to see if it's clearing. Let me back this off. I check to see if it's clearing, and it's clearing really tight. Then I come across and I check the tightness on this other side, like this. See where I'm at? And I roll the saw down these tracks and I check to make sure that this height is exactly where it is all the way down. Now I bought some new track. Hang, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, but I bought some track. The track is slightly different gauge than this by about 1 16th of an inch. So as it rolls off of the new track that I bought onto this, there's a 1 16th inch change in altitude. And 1 16th inch I can live with. I mean, that's minor little tolerance. And the only way to, to alter that would be to go and take the 1x4s and take them down 1 16th of an inch. And I'm not going to do that. Too much effort. It works great. I have no complaints. Again, this is a Woodland Mills HM126 saw. For the money, you can't go wrong. You just absolutely can't. If you look at uh, wood misers, they'll have a number and it'll say like um, 126, so you're going to be t paying 12,600. I didn't pay anywhere near that much. I do not know the current prices on these saws, but they're really good. Now they've made a modification that I'm not fond of. Let me back this off. My wheels are recessed back. The new one, this part is cut off and the wheels stick out. Let me do that again. This part is cut off so that the wheels are out here. Just They just removed that. That's all they did. The reason I like this is because if the saw won't roll, if the log is too big, we're talking up here, this is going to tell me before I even get there. So, I like this design better. I'm not knocking the new design. I mean, I've been using this one. I like it because it, I know exactly if I can get past a log. With that said, dysfunctional vet out.